Hello everyone from around the world. Welcome to the latest installment of the N Generation Project. Finding Fame in Anonymity. Joe S.'s Journey on Narcotics Anonymous's Spiritual Wisdom. A classic remastered Narcotics Anonymous guest speaker, but before we delve into today's featured content, I want to take a moment to connect with our incredible audience. Thank you again for clicking on this video. As a small channel and project we appreciate and value every single individual who has spent their time with us. Blessings. Now sit back relax and enjoy this remastered speaker tape of Being Famous in an Anonymous Program. I'm a recovering addict, my name is Joe. And I'm from Albany, New York. And I'd like to thank God for allowing me to be here. I'd like to thank God for allowing you guys to be here. But most of all, I'd like to thank God for a 12-step process that helped free me from myself. I want to say I'm a little bit tired. You know, we were on the road early this morning. A uh, guy in my home group celebrating 10 years. My home group starts at 7.30 a.m. So we left there and then we ended up at Hales Creek Correctional Facility to share with some inmates behind the wall. We left there and we ended up back in Albany for about an hour before we came out here. So uh, I need to say I was uh, called by the, by the Springfield area and uh, to do a workshop, but I never heard from them again. So I said I was still gonna come and enjoy myself and listen. And, um, and uh, I was approached later on in the night and asked to do this workshop. And I took it, you know, on blind faith. And I didn't bring my book, so I asked uh, Brother Ali if I could possibly use his uh, book so I can reference the literature, you know, because, like, uh, I need to say, like, I'm just the messenger. I am not the messenger. So I really want to say, like, I'd like to thank God again for allowing me and Brother Victor, you know, safe travel, you know, uh, all day long. We've been sharing with each other. We've been enjoying each other's company. We've been enjoying each other's struggles and ups and downs as we talked about it. You know, and I need to say, like, uh, 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 I just want to set the tone, you know, uh, and allow God to work through me, you know, and do for me what I find impossible to do for myself. I want to say again, you know, uh, I'm thankful that you guys are here because without you, there would be no me. You know, I need to say, I started using at the age of nine. And for the next 29 years, I lived a life based on a decision made by a nine-year-old. I remember, I remember the little boy who was always looking for an outside physical solution to an inside spiritual problem. I'm talking about a little boy that was locked and loaded and fat boy chubby and four eyes and didn't understand why. I'm talking about a little boy that was like, you know, uh, uh, told her, sit down, shut up, be seen and not heard. I remember that, you know, and I remember like, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, how, I, how it made me feel, you know, and uh, I didn't feel like a part of. You know, and um, I need to say, I don't, I said to myself when they asked me to do this topic, like why they give it to me? You know what I'm saying? You could have found something better for me. You know what I'm saying? Like the steps. But I'm right where God wants me to be. Doing right what God wants me to do. And today I'm all right with who I am. I'm all right with who I am. And I'm all right with each and every one of you being who you are. You know, I found out in this process, no longer do I have to control every circumstance and every situation, every person, place, or thing. Today I'm all right with just being myself. I came to the Fellowship of Narcotics Anonymous on June 9, 1994, and I need to say at the end of my road, I found myself on a couch in a roach-infested house with four other addicts waiting for a knock at the door. I was being held hostage by a little tiny rock. I remember what it was like to draw a stick to your head, hand nappy, 
Arms funky, shoes turn over, still telling myself I'm all right. I'm telling you, you're looking at a guy, you know, at the age of 13, who wanted to be a chef. My mother was a chef, my grandmother was a chef. I graduated from one of the finest schools in the country, graduated third in my class. I was in a student body of 2,600 students. There was only 11 blacks on the campus. I graduated third in my class and still felt less than. You know, I had some claim to fame in my life. You know, my sponsor told me, you need to talk about your success as well as uh, the trials and tribulations. You know, I did recipe testing for the uh, 1976 Culinary Olympic team. You know, I, I, I helped set up the 29 face shop and the one and two World Trade Center for the Angelco Company. I faced the decorated gate tier white lace cake for the movie The Godfather in 1975. I did a lot of stuff, but money, property, and prestige. I was still trapped in a, in a progression of a disease that was holding me high. You know, I remember what it was like. But I can't tell you when I crossed the line from youth to abuse. But I know I did because as I told you about the end of my road, boy, I was like in pain, misery, suffering. And I was still like then, I'm all right. I was calling pain pleasure. So I came to the Fellowship of Narcotics Anonymous. I had no clue because see, at the end of the road, I was like, I only, I only had a, like a two-word prayer. I was in that condition. That prayer that just said, help me. Help me. I had no clue that God would introduce me to a place called Narcotics Anonymous. You know, I, I, and I need to say, and, 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 and my friend reminds me, you know, I came to Holyoke uh, 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 in my early recovery to share a message you know, uh, uh, on just for the day. And I talked about, like, as a kid, I remember my mother used to saying, boy, I said, can I go outside? She said, yeah, but don't go off the steps. <laughs> I came to knock out a tsunami, and they said, don't go off the steps. <laughs> but check it out, as a kid, I went off the steps and got my ass whooped every time. Every time, you know? Because I was on the steps and I was looking around and all the insanity was going on. And I just wanted to be a part of it. And I need to say, like, you know, I came to the Fellowship of Narcotics Anonymous, June 9th, 1994, filled with a lot of pain, shame, guilt, embarrassment, dereliction, degradation, not understanding, like, this prayer that I had prayed where God wouldn't lead me. And I need to say I plugged in right away. You know, I, I seen you guys hugging each other, laughing, smelling good, looking good. I'm trapped in low self-esteem. It was nothing funny, you know, when I got here. It was nothing funny. I was in a dilemma. I was in a hopeless dilemma. Huh? I'm talking about a hopeless, I had no clue. I had no clue, man. You know, I, I was talking to my friend about guests. I didn't come here in desperation. Check this out. I came here in sheer desperation. <laughs> it wasn't just desperation. I need to tell you, I've been desperate before. I ran out in the street and found one more. But in sheer desperation, there ain't no more. There ain't no more. Boy, listen, the only place I could go was to go. Only place. So I came here and they told me that I suffered from a disease that expresses itself in ways that is anti-social, that makes detection, diagnosis, and treatment difficult. I was like, damn. I didn't know. I didn't know. You know, I need to say, like, you know, this topic, being famous in an anonymous program, ooh, the hell in Finnick Dex. You know what I mean? But I, you know what that says? That says that, you know, check this out. You're, you're in this fellowship, you know, and, and if you've been around here a minute and you've worked the 12 steps, I'm not talking about doing the one, two, three, cha, cha, cha. I'm talking about worked all 12 steps. Listen, listen, my sponsor got, my sponsor got 57 sponsees, and I'm the only one to work through all 12. I only have one sponsee who has worked through all 12. Let me tell you something. This is a 12-step fellowship. 
Go on and listen. I needed the benefits of what God had to order. I didn't want to like, uh-uh. I didn't want no cut on this. You know what I mean? Are you putting cut on your, on your recovery by not working the 12 steps? Are you in the four steps talking about I'm stuck? Huh? Have you stuck it away in the drawer like they said and never picked it up again? Huh? Are you scared to share the fifth step when you had guys like me? You know what I said in the fifth step? That I got, I had sex with two of my sisters and I said one was feeding and the other was drunk. I never wanted to tell nobody that. I remember the times when I went out on the corner looking for a girl. Found I, had, I got home and found out that girl was really a guy. You know, the shit was so good I looked for his ass again. They said the three indispensable principles is honesty, open mindedness, and willingness. Have you gotten honest about who you are? I'm talking about a heterosexual man with homosexual thoughts. At any given time, I show up without my own damn permission. <laughs> but it wasn't until I went through the step process that I revealed that to me. It ain't what you need to reveal to your sponsor. It ain't how soon your sponsor needs relief. How soon do you need relief? I'm waiting for my sponsor to do my step. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Why don't you do your step and reveal yourself to your sponsor? Huh? I'm talking about a practice. This is a self-help program. What's the first thing in our symbol? I can't hear you. Maybe y'all ain't working the same damn program. So, for the fourth step talks about we get to know ourselves. We saw through the confusion and the contradiction of our lives. Are you still lying to you about you? Are you still in a facade wearing a mask? Huh? I found out in the fifth step that I'm a phony motherfucker most of my life, all of my life. Always, like a chameleon, could adapt to any arena at any given time. I didn't care if I was uptown, downtown, east side, west side, it didn't matter. I found a way because I just wanted to fit in, you know? And I'm not here because of popularity, I'm here because of God's grace and God's mercy. And I need to say, like, I thank God again for you. I thank God again for each and every one of you. See, when I look around this room, I know one thing, like, the same God that spoke to my heart in my sheer desperation, Huh? Boy, listen, you guys have made a believer out of me. You know, second step in. We came to believe. How did I come to believe? See, I remember that my first Narcotics Anonymous meeting, there was a guy sharing, he had eight years. The same guy, you know, used to try to get clean across the street where I was dealing drugs at. And I used to say, he used to have his book on his arm. I used to say, yellow man, come here. He'd be like, <laughs> I got 16 years and I talked to him this morning before I came. You know? So I'm here, you know, and uh, I have no clue where I'm going. But I want to say, like, you know, I'm, I'm thankful to be here. In my early recovery, man, I remember, you know, the guy with, you know, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, going to meetings, hearing people share. You know, I got a sponsor at 30 days. He gave me a quarter and his telephone number said, call me. And I called him, he says, call me tomorrow. And I called him, he said, I'll talk to you later. And I called him, and I said, I'll see you uh, at a meeting. And I called him, and I kept calling him. And I seen him at a meeting, I said, yo, man, come here, I want to call. <laughs> I said, like, why ain't you calling me back? He said, I don't sponsor nobody that don't want it. I've had the same sponsor since I had 30 days. And, and I need to tell you, I love you. Donald, wherever you're at, I love you, you know? And I need to say, like, uh, I was listening to people speak, and I was listening to people share, and I said to myself, like we all say, maybe one day, maybe one day, that could be me. And I remember, I was upstairs, right before I came down here, and I was looking at this guy, upstairs in the hospitality room. And I was, my mind started going, man. Freedom 10. He said, yeah, Freedom 10 was my very first convention. I had about seven months clean and had the hug off meeting on Sunday morning. They asked if anybody wanted to share. And out of about 3,000 people, 
uh, uh, probably 80, 90, maybe 100 people raised their hand. And they walked right over to me. And I was like, oh, still. <laughs> I didn't realize what I just did. You know what I'm saying? But I got up and I said, and I felt this warmth. I felt this warmth. And they told me that honest sharing was the antidote to disease thinking. And I was able to like free myself about how I was feeling. I was still feeling new and, and, and real green and, and, and still like uh, not understanding what the process was all about, you know. And I had met this guy, and the first time I met him, he told me upstairs he got 18 years. And that guy was Jim P. And that was the first time I ever met him. But I knew I was looking at him, and he's looking at me. I'm saying, I know this cat. I know this cat. And I've heard many of his tapes. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and you know, it's the honor like, to plug in with you again. You know, and uh, I want to say, like, uh, you know, I spoke at the Hubbard meeting. And I felt a new energy and a new vibe. You know, something I'd never felt before. I felt a new uh, love coming from, uh, you know, the people. Uh, that was at that uh, convention, you know, and um, I started being more and more diligent in working the steps, you know, and a lot of people in my area call me Joe Tex, you know what I'm saying? Because I do it by book. I said, you know, you can tell me whatever you want to tell me. They told me the first 103 pages of the basic text was my guide to recovery. And I plugged in right away, right away. You know, I went, I mean, I used to fall asleep every night reading the basic text. And, and people used to say, boy, you can't share without talking about the basic text. I said, the basic text is the closest thing I got to God. Huh? Guy asked me one day, do you read the Bible? I said, no, I read the basic text. Huh? I was telling the truth. I was telling the truth. You know, and I need to say, like, uh, I still, on a daily basis, read the basic text. You know, and, 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 and as I said, I'm not the message, I'm just the messenger. That an addict, any addict, can stop using, lose the desire to use to find a new way of live. That our message is hope and our promise is freedom. You know? They said, when it all said and done, huh? When it was all said and done, huh? Not part of it. All. All we have is ourselves in the message, man. So, like, um, I remember, um, you know, working the steps, step study meeting, sponsor telling me start, start a meeting, start a step meeting, be there on a, on a regular basis, you know, and I started going to these meetings, and I, start, I remember starting a meeting, and it was like a handful of us, and today, you know, uh, uh, probably 100 people go to that meeting every week, you know, and I pass that same method on to my sponsor here. You know, uh, starting me. I need to tell you next week we're having our anniversary. And the name of my home group is First Things First. We meet Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. to help each other stay clean. We're at 260 North Pearl Street in Albany, New York. And, and we invite you all to be there next Saturday, you know, uh, at our fourth anniversary. You know, and um, I needed to share that because uh, I, I, I plug Narcotics Anonymous, although they say it's by attraction and not promotion, you know what I'm saying? I ain't saying I got the best home group in the world, but it's the best one for me, you know? It gets me started. First things first. What a, huh? And first things first, I needed to work the steps, be busy before learning about who I was, you know, or who I am, you know? I need to uh, talk about, uh, uh, as I stayed clean, and started like understanding uh, the literature and, and allowing other people, you know, share their views with me on the literature. You know, as I started uh, fellowshipping more, going to more meetings, you know, plugging into service, you know, in the ABCD region, we have like 114 meetings. I remember being, you know, uh, uh, working on outreach, and outreach is where, you know, you go out to all the meetings that are in your meeting list, you know what I'm saying? And just like any other area, we had 114 and only 32 GSRs are showing up at the area. You know the deal, huh? You know what time it is. So we, we're still traveling out to those meetings and trying to get them to send their, uh, their group, group service representative, 
you know, and I got to know a lot of people, you know, and I wasn't trying to be famous, you know, but I got to know a lot of people, you know, and, and I started going out to a lot of meetings and conventions, you know, and people started asking me to share, you know, and I remember one of the very first conventions that I was asked to do a workshop at was the very first Niagara Falls Convention, you know, for the Western, Western New York region of Narcotics Anonymous. Met a lot of people, met a lot of people. I remember one of the things that, you know, uh, 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 at, at that meeting is I met a guy, right? And he sponsored a guy who was worth $200 million. He said, how do you sponsor a guy who is worth $200 million? You know? And it wasn't about the money. You know what I'm saying? But we get knocked and loaded in money, property, and prestige. You know what I'm saying? And I thought, like, he was telling me, like, he was living in a house and the lights were cut off, there wasn't no running water and, and all kinds of stuff. And here he is sponsoring a guy with $200 million that wouldn't ask him for a nickel. Man, so I started, like, seeing the evidence of of things in program, you know what I'm saying? And I started seeing people like spiritually connected, you know, to the program and not got it to none. You know, I heard people like, you know, start like getting in touch with God, you know, and uh, uh, our third step, you know, talks about we made a decision to turn our will and our life over to the care of God as we understood him, you know what I'm saying? And I had to like start to understand, find my own understanding of what a God was. And I started saying things like the same God that take a brown cow, eat green grass, and give you white milk, that God. I'm talking about the same God that'll take a tree and make it appear dead in the little birdie in the north and tell him. Huh? And one of the things that I use, I, 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 work, with, I work with the youth, right? And, and a lot of times youth don't understand, you know, uh, uh, God, they don't believe in God. They, you know, they, uh, uh, uh. And a lot of us, you know, were like told about the punishing God. And I'd say, well, did you pick your parents? And if your parents had to pick somebody, would they have picked you? How'd that happen? And usually they would say, God. I said, well, that's the God I'm talking about. Huh? That God. You know, and a lot of times, you know, even people in the Fellowship of Narcotics Anonymous, you know, they pray for that. Uh, uh, let me get a girlfriend, God. Huh? Let me get out of this one again, God. Huh? Well, around here, through the step process, we start taking responsibility for our attitudes and behaviors. You know, and I often talk about the disease of addiction and drugs being only a substance. You know, a, 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 a mere part, or a disease of addiction on a scale of one to 100, 10% is the drug, the other 90% is the attitude and behavior that continues to lead me back to the 10%. Huh? And that same 10% that puts me in jails, institutions, and spiritual death, if it's not the physical death. Why do I continue to like act out on a behavior that puts me back in a 10% in a place I don't want to be. Huh? I told you I was at the jail this morning. And I asked him, how many of y'all been in here more than one? More than half of them raised their hand. Why do you keep on doing the same shit that takes you back to a place that you don't want to be? Huh? You remember at the end of the road, your last hit? The last. Four nisses. You remember that look you had on your face? What is it, Victor? Sheer desperation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't want to forget that look. I don't want to forget that fear. Because you know that those who fail to remember, mm -mm -mm, I don't want to go back to the couch. I remember what it was like. I remember what it's like and I don't want to be there. One aspect of our addiction was our inability to deal with life and life's terms. We try drugs combinations of drugs to cope with, check this word out, seemingly hostile words. Hold up, hold up, wait. Seemingly, what, what are you talking about? Seemingly, my perception. I'm talking about, you know, not only do I have a fractured personality, I have a warped perception. Seemingly hostile world. Huh? Or listen, we dream to find a magic formula that would solve the ultimate problem. 
I said, 99.9% of any problem I ever had, I caused it myself, but I always blamed you. When do I stop blaming you for the problems that I have, the circumstances that I'm in? When I start working the step and getting in touch with self-deception, self-deceit, self-righteousness, arrogance, unwillingness, impatience, intolerance, huh? When I start like plugging in to who I really am. And you find out there ain't no excuse anymore. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about when you start revealing me to me. And I don't have to like, like, like put myself in circumstances that I know will cause me pain, misery, and suffering and still sit around and say it's all right because it ain't all right no more. It ain't all right no more. You know? And our 11th step bears it out, talking about, you know what it says in 11th step? You pray for things and then have to turn around and pray for that damn removal. Huh? And you still expect God to be there with both prayers. Huh? Don't want to take responsibility for the shit you put yourself in. Huh? So what happens in, a, uh, 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 in talking about this tactic, being famous in an anonymous program, what happens if you have worked the 12 steps and you start to free yourself from yourself and you share in, in, in meetings, you know what I'm saying? Because people like uh, plug into honest sharing, you know what I'm saying? And they identify with the incest issue. They identify with the abandonment, you know, the fear, the lying, the stealing, the cheating, uh, the manipulating, the justifying, and the rationalizing. They plug in, and then a lot of them can't get honest about it. So when they see somebody that gets honest about it, you know what they do? They pull you over after the meeting. But shit, if you can tell me, you can tell your damn stuff. Right? And I hear people all the time, you know, hey, they hear you share in the meeting, you share some honest stuff, you know, you got plugged in, they can identify because, like, we're more alike than we're different, huh? And they be saying things like, hey, your number I'm looking for a How long have you been around here? I've been around here about six years. And what do you mean you're looking for a sponsor? You've been around here six years. You know what that tells me? That tells me you're disobedient. I got here by way of disobedience. It's only by obedience that I stay here. They said the sooner we face our problems, sooner. What does that word mean? <laughs> Talking about like being obedient to what the literature is saying to you. It ain't what your spouse is saying to you. What's the literature saying to you? Because if my spouse ain't like following the literature, I don't want to follow him. He a dope thing too. Huh? So I follow a sponsor that can always like, like reference the literature. Send me to a place where I can find some spiritual relief. Not just relief, spiritual relief. So I'm talking about like all of a sudden I'm going to uh, conventions, people are asking me to come here and come there. You know, I get asked a lot to share in a lot of different places. I travel a lot, I'm a traveling at it. You know, and I try to be obedient to the literature. You know, they say I had a child who traveled uh, hundreds of miles, many, many miles to carry this message. You know what I'm saying? And I need to tell you, in early recovery, you know, three, four years in the process, you know, I thought I, uh, uh, being at the podium was where I always should have been. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, but uh, check it out. I remember as a kid, man, getting in trouble and then getting out of the trouble and on the way home, I was like, you know, uh, uh, like rejoicing. And my mother said, boy, you're going to be a preacher one day. You know what I'm saying? But this ain't about preaching. This is just about sharing. And if it sounds like preaching, keep coming. <laughs> huh? I damn sure got something to preach about. Huh? Because, like, God has brought me a long, long way. God has brought me to a place that I never fathomed I would be today. You know, and as a direct result of working the steps, I got in touch with a God that's omnipotent. You know, I, I'm telling you, like, one of the ways that I, uh, I talk about God, you know, and if I uh, offend anybody, keep coming. I'm going to keep talking about God. You know what I'm saying? Check it out. Because, like, I go to a place like Niagara Falls, and I see the fall. I'm talking about a hundred billion gallons per second, 365 days a year, 
24 hours a day. I'm talking about a great big giant God. I'm talking about an ever-flowing God. I'm telling, talking about a God that will like uh, do for you. Well, here it is. Ongoing recovery is dependent. Listen to the fact. Ongoing. What is it? Ongoing. Recovery is dependent. I'm dependent on something here. Huh? Dependent on a relationship with a loving God who cares for us and will do for us what we find in pot to do for ourselves. Huh? So there's things that are possible for me, and there's some things that are impossible. And I still have to have, go back to the second step, be deep. Because that's what it says in the second step, huh? It said, based on the evidence of a pattern that cannot be fully explained, confronted with this evidence, huh? I've been confronted with some evidence of this power. You remember when you got in that situation, you said, oh, God. You didn't honor for mama, daddy, sister, brother. You said, oh, God. That God. That God. Huh? Just because you got clean and got a new pair of clothes and a house and a car and a, some uh, Mr. T starter kit, huh? <laughs> you better still be dependent. Don't think like you like plugged in the independent because we still are dependent. Dependent every waking hour. I often talk about you can look at a clock and say, I went to bed at that time, but you can't tell me what time you went to sleep. You can look at a clock, open your eyes and say, I woke up at such and such a time, but you can't tell me what time you went to sleep. Huh? Only God could. Okay? You can sit in bed and toss and turn and rock and roll. You know what I'm saying? And only God will quiet your mind to the point of sleep. You know, and I need to say that because, like, I share. I share, and I'm really in touch with the literature. I'm in touch with the step work. I'm in touch with, like, freeing me from myself. And a lot of times, people think it's arrogance. And it's just confidence because I had no confidence once I got here. So as you share, you know, they, you know, I, I know him, I know him, you know how it is, you know? When you share, a lot of people know you. When you talk to people, when you plug in with the we of the fellowship, you get to know a lot of people. You get to know a lot of people and they get to know you because you reveal yourself to, to them too. Once you reveal yourself to yourself, once you started moving away from the shame, guilt, embarrassment, dereliction, and degradation, right? Moving away from it. Like this for the day when I reveal it, the more I reveal it, the more I move away from it. Does that mean a perfect hell? No. You know, I was talking to uh, uh, Ron H. earlier. You know, I was telling him about a situation, you know, with this last relationship I was in. You know, I've been in a relationship for like uh, a couple of years. We broke up, went back together, broke up, went back together. You know, the last time we broke up in November, four months later, she was talking about she was getting married to somebody else. My first thought is like, yeah, man, we've been together for two and a half years and we couldn't get married. Marriage license is on the table. You know, and she'll probably hear this tape because I ain't trying to hide now. You know what I'm saying? Check it out. Check it out. You know, all of a sudden, like, I didn't call because, see, I understand, you know, uh, listen, I know, like, I believe in God and I believe God will do for us again. You know, what we find impossible to do for myself. So I met her and I was like, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. You know what I'm saying? And, and we had a lot of good times and revealed ourselves to each other. You know, through all the ups and downs and the ins and outs. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, uh, uh, we broke up in November and I said I wasn't going to call her. Because the last couple of times we broke up, I always called her. And I was like, you know, in the fetal position. I'm in the bed crying. You know what I'm saying? I found myself going out on the back porch, shutting the back porch door, going and looking out the front window, shutting the front window. Uh, I turn the TV on, turn the damn TV off, I go in the bathroom, I take a shower, I get out the shower, I'm back on the back porch, I'm back in the front room, I'm back in the bed, TV's back on, TV's back off, I'm driving my goddamn self break. <laughs> I ain't gonna call it that. Uh, and I get. But I kept calling people and telling them, you know, how I felt. 
because the bottom line is, you know, six step for me, you know, re revealing some hair to beat that I love deep and I love hard. And I care too much. And sometimes I take too much of your sheep. That's me in my six step. Is it bad character defect? Some of them know. But a lot of times I found myself, you know, going outside of myself to appease you, and, and, I, and I'm feeling like shit. So I said, uh, this time, I ain't called. And I didn't call, you know? And then I heard, like, from a son that she was getting mad. And I said, God bless her. And I didn't call. And when she moved out, she had a friend of mine to find her apartment. And I never asked him where the apartment was. I let him be. Because see, at the end of that breakup, I prayed with the same enthusiasm to move her out as I did to move her in. <laughs> and I want to tell you, it only happened, listen, it happened just the way God wanted to happen. We parted with a loving hug and kiss. Just like we started. And the telephone rang one day. Five months later, I just called to see if I had to <laughs> And I need to tell you, I wasn't substituted. I wasn't substituted. I kept going to meetings, I kept sharing. I sat in my, in, in my home group and I cried like a baby. And I remember, man, being deeply touched, deeply moved by the separation. And I asked God, take my will in my life. Guide me in my recovery. Show me how to live. The say, my sponsor told me, this is the opportune time for you to practice a thing called kindness. And so you be kind now. You want to work a spiritual principle, work kindness. And I, I was nice. And I felt like the same support I could give each and every one of you, I could still give her in spite of my love. And then she told me like, I'm having second thoughts about the marriage. Just sitting on my bed. Now here it is, check it out. I still wasn't trying to get in the way of what God was doing. I wasn't trying to get in the way. See, I, see through the step process, I realized like most of the time when I showed up, anger, frustration, fear, loneliness, and despair were times I was trying to get in the way of only what God can do. Lately, we've been talking. We've been talking, and yeah, there's been a couple of late night booty calls. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm, I embraced him because, like, I didn't facilitate him. And I'm not in denial about still being in love with him. I'm not in denial. And I'm not going to put up no barriers, you know, in spite of what other people were telling me. Oh, you should leave her alone. You shouldn't bother with her. Blah, 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 blah. Man, listen, I'm in love. I'm in love with something that God put in my life. I didn't manufacture it, man. I need to tell you. I've known this person for since we were teenagers. Hadn't seen each other in 20 some odd years. She had four kids when we had met later on down the road. Her kids were like grown, you know? But the spiritual attachment, man, like, listen, I can't even begin to tell you how strong that spiritual attachment was and that I couldn't deny my spirit. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, God talks to our spirit and we're just too damn hard-headed to listen. You know what I'm saying? And you know how it is the same way with the drug. There's one on this side saying, do it, 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 do it. Do it. And then there's one on the other side saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. You know what I mean? Torn. Huh? They call that confusion. Huh? I wasn't confused because that little voice was saying, don't worry, baby boy, I got you. Third step in, huh? But I don't know what I'm feeling. 
She got her apartment, I got mine, and I still support her, you know, in her endeavors. And a lot of times she wants to say something, but she really can't say it, but her actions and behaviors tell me more than she could probably say out of her mouth anyway. You know, what happens is we become good judges of character because we start to look at our own character. And, and I told you we were more alike than we're different. You know what I'm saying? And, and the bottom line is some people just can't share exactly where they're at. Are you all right today? And I don't have to talk for her, you know? And I need to say, like, you know, I'm not pop, you know? But they say, was pop laying always right and was right ain't always pop, you know? And, and I love this program and I love sharing about, you know, uh, how I've been freed from myself as a direct result of this program. You know, I want to just say in closing, you know, that, uh, that God, God has given me the ability to look at me and be all right with who he created. No longer do I have to wear the facade. I don't have to be locked in deceit, justification, rationalization. I don't have to like put on the mask, you know. I can be all right with who I am. I need to tell you, I like to uh, thank, uh, you know, the Massachusetts uh, Springfield area for asking me, you know, to come up and share my experience, strength, and hope. You know, I don't know if I helped anybody in the process. I know, like, I had no clue about what I was going to share. Ali and I prayed before the meeting, you know, and it's a pleasure to be, in a, be able to do a workshop with this brother. Ali, I want to tell you, you know, openly, I love you. Jim, I love you. You know, there's other other people here that came out to hear me uh, share, you know, from Schenectady and Albany. I love you. Thank you for being with me because an addict alone is in bad company and I don't want to be in bad company. So thanks for being with me. My name is Thank you, Joe, for sharing the experience, Frank, and Hope. Our next speaker is Ali from Boston.